There's a lot of change happening on August 17th in the real estate industry. Today, we're going to talk about it. What are the changes that are going to be taking place on August 17th? Well, today we're going to be discussing and going into detail about that. We're going to be talking what these changes are, how it affects both buyers and sellers, and how to really navigate these changes both as buyers and sellers. So I think we need some context here, and that is that back in March of this year, the National Association of Realtors reached a settlement agreement in two cases, the Sitzer Burnett case and the Murrell case. And the NAR settled for a total of $418 million and to eliminate commission rules. So essentially it said that it was unfair for the seller to be paying the commission to the buyer's agent as well as the listing agent. And so basically the listing agent as well and the buyer agent, they didn't like that. Now they're making it so each party is responsible for compensating their own agent. And the current system, which has been around forever it seems, really would have the seller pay the listing broker on average between five to 6% of the total sales price. And then the buyer's agent would receive normally half of that. So if it's 5%, it would be 2.5%. If it was 6%, it would be 3%. And that would be split between both the listing agent and the buyer's agent. Well, that model is now going away. And the seller can choose not to offer any compensation for the buyer's agent. And the seller can choose to just pay their listing agent. Now, it does not mean that it's completely out. So if the seller wishes to offer any compensation to the buyer's agent, they are welcome and allowed to do so. So the seller can offer a concession of 2.5%, 2%, or even 0% to the buyer's agent. The seller now has that right to not offer any compensation to the buyer's agent. Now, as you can imagine, this has thrown so many buyers into a really big panic attack. Now, buying a home right now, if you're in the market to buy a home, you know it's really expensive with high interest rates. It's stressful to get your offer through right now and just dealing with home inspections on properties that are really old. So just all that together is already putting a lot of angst in a lot of buyers. And then when you think about what you have to do to have a down payment to buy a home right now and have funds for closing costs, well, it makes it really difficult that if you're a buyer right now looking to buy in a home after August 17th, you know, you're going to have to be compensating your agent. We're going to go into detail a little bit about that. So as you can imagine now, a, a lot of buyers are stressing out that the fact that they're going to have to offer a concession or they're going to have to compensate their own agent as a buyer right now. So if you're looking to buy a home after August 17th, here are some of the changes that you need to be aware of. So as of August 17th, it will be law that the buyers will be required to sign a buyer's agency agreement with their agent that they are working with. In that agreement, it will have whatever fee you and your agent have come up with for compensation to your agent to assist you in buying a home. Now that fee can be a flat fee or it can be commission based. Maybe it's two or two and a half percent of the sales price. That'll be totally up to you and your agent. Now, again, this will be something you will be negotiating with your agent. If you are looking to buy a home, I recommend that you interview at least three agents and ask the following questions. What type of services are you going to be able to provide to help you not only get the home, but able to walk you through the process from beginning to end? What are the fees going to be, right? So for example, if an agent says that it's a flat fee of 2000, then you need to ask yourself, what are you getting for that flat fee service plan? Are they doing a lot of the work? Or are you gonna be doing a lot of the work? My guess is if you're hiring a flat fee agent, you're gonna be the one who's gonna be doing the most of the work. You're gonna be the one setting up inspections. You're gonna be the one who's gonna be organizing a lot of the paperwork. So maybe they're just doing the contract 
for you? Maybe they're just opening doors for you. Are they going to take you to properties? Are they going to write the offer for you? Are they going to negotiate on your behalf? So these are the, some of the things that you actually need to actually ask your agent what they're going to be doing for you now. So in this instance, it really actually helps you because now you have a lot more transparency when it comes to this. So the agreements can be up to 90 days long. And once again, that's up to you and your agent to decide on the time frame of the agreement. It will also outline what counties and cities the agreement will cover. One question we are getting asked is, what if I don't have a real estate agent and I just want to see one specific property? Well, you can call a real estate agent and sign an agreement just for one day for one specific property. So this way, it's not forcing you to commit to an agent right away. Think of it more of as like a trial run. So if you like the agent, you can sign a longer agreement moving forward with them and vice versa. But quite possibly, the biggest question that we are getting right now is people are hearing that you can't visit an open house without an agent representing you and a signed buyer's agency representation agreement. This is not true. Now, that being said, if you go to an open house, there will be a lot of information presented to you. All right, so I wanted to help you understand the new rules when it comes to open houses. So, can listing agents hold open houses? Yes, the listing agents can still hold open houses after the implementation of the NAR settlement. Additionally, agents from the same brokerage can also hold open houses for the listing agent. So a lot of times we'll get uh, calls on our listings from agents from other different offices and brokerages to host open houses at our listings. That won't be able to happen anymore. Do visitors need to sign documentation at an open house? Now, in some states, they're required to actually post signage outside the open house before you come in. California has not required that yet, but the need for visitors to sign documentation depends on the relationship they wish to establish with the agent present. And here are a few different scenarios. So maybe the buyer coming into the open house doesn't want any representation at all. So visitors who do not wish to enter into a buyer representation agreement can sign the open house visitor non-agency disclosure. And this form acknowledges that the agent is representing the seller, not the buyer, and it helps identify if the visitor is already working with another agent. Now, another opportunity is number two is uh, limited representation. Now, if an unrepresented visitor wants to create a temporary working relationship, the agent uses a form called the Limited Property Representation and Broker Compensation Agreement. Now, this non-exclusive agreement applies only to the open house property, lasts no longer than 30 days, and does not require exclusivity, right? And then the last and finally is the full representation agreement. So for visitors interested in a broader working relationship, the, ad the agent can propose the buyer representation and broker compensation agreement. And this form can cover the open house property or even multiple properties and may be exclusive or non-exclusive depending on what the buyer and the agent agree upon. So since the agent hosting the open house represents the agent of the seller, that I would not be surprised if there will be signage clarifying this before you enter. So if you're already working with an agent, I think it's probably a really good idea to download your buyer broker agreement to your phone so you can show that to the agent host in the open house. Another change is the removal of the buyer's compensation or commission in the multiple listing service. Before these rules took effect, a buyer's agent was able to see what type of compensation was being offered. Now, the reason it's being removed was to prevent agents from steering their clients away from properties based on commission. Steering clients away due to commission being offered, I have to admit, really a huge disservice to the client. This is what gives agents a really bad name. Now, I do agree with this because I think you really need to have more transparency when it comes to this. But here's the question. So what happens if you want to buy a home, but the seller isn't offering any compensation or concessions? Don't panic. What you could do is ask the seller to help pay compensation you agreed upon with your agent. You could ask the full amount or half or some type of number. Now, if it's zero and they say no, you will have to come up with the money 
I do think what's probably going to happen is that either one or two things is going to happen. Either one, the buyer is going to have to put up that money to put, pay the buyer's agent. But what I think is more probable and the theory that I have is that the buyer is going to offer less the list price to pay the buyer's agent commission, right? So the buyers have to save up money for a down payment and closing costs. It's a lot of money already, especially if you're looking at a two to 3% of the sales price to your closing costs additionally. So don't be surprised if this starts happening. This is why we recommend it to all of our sellers that it makes more sense to offer a concession or compensation for the buyer's agent, which in turn makes you as a seller more favorable home to write an offer on. And this is especially the case now that inventory has doubled and tripled in most Southern California neighborhoods. So if you're a seller, yes, it's true, you don't have to pay the buyer's agent any type of compensation, but it's in your best interest to move the home with more competition here on the market in most neighborhoods in Southern California that you offer that to the buyer's agent. But the number one question, right, that I think I'm getting right now when it comes to this is, well, Scott, can I just go directly to the listing agent? Can I not hire a buyer's agent and work directly with the listing agent? Yes, you can do that, but be aware you're entering into dual agency and the listing agent's fiduciary responsibility is to the seller, not to you. They will not be helping you with anything along the way because their responsibility is to the seller. So if you're confident enough that you don't need an agent, maybe you've bought several homes before over the years, that's fine if you don't need an agent's help. But my worry truly is for first-time buyers or buyers who haven't bought and sold in maybe 15, 20 years because they need the representation to have somebody work and negotiate on their behalf when it comes to repairs, when it comes to contractual items. That's where having an agent to go to bat for them really comes into play. Any questions about this? leave us a comment below, shoot us a message. We'd love to answer them for you. We threw a lot at you today. And my guess also is that what we're talking about today here in August of 2024, there's gonna be a lot of moving parts. There's gonna be some a little bit of chaos. And so it's possible a lot of things that we're talking about right now may not even be valid a few months, a year down the line. And like everything else, things change. So hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel if you like it. And I'm Scott Himmelstein with the Scott Himmelstein Group. We'll see you on the next video.